In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to detect the user's browser with JavaScript. So trying to determine the user's browser in JavaScript can be a little bit tricky and should best be avoided if possible, but you may have a good reason to check the user's browser, and we'll discuss a few possible reasons in just a moment. But first let's look at one technique for detecting the user's browser, which is usually the first thing that people come across when trying to solve this problem, and that is to look at the browser's user agent in a technique which is commonly known as user agent sniffing. So on the window object in any browser, there'll be a navigator object, which has loads of different properties, including one called the user agent. So as you can see in the string that's returned, there's lots of information in terms of what computer I'm using, and also some information to give away the browser that I'm using. So a common approach would be to check this string for a particular browser name. So for example, checking for the string Chrome returns true because I'm currently using the Chrome browser. But you might have already noticed a problem with this approach because if I was going to do the same thing to check if the user was using the Safari browser, that also gives me a true response because Safari is in the user agent string. So you can make more complicated expressions to try and get the real browser that the user is using. For example, in Safari, we could check if the string Safari is in the user agent, but it doesn't include the word Chrome. Which if we then use the same expression in Chrome, gives us a value of false. But hopefully you can see that this method has got the potential for lots of errors, especially when the browser vendors might change their user agent strings at any time. One final problem with user agent sniffing as well, is that it is quite easy for browsers to spoof or imitate other browsers simply by changing that user agent string. So in short, you can't really rely on the user agent string and you should probably look at why you want to identify the user's browser before coming up with an appropriate solution. So one possible reason is that you might want to check if the browser supports a particular function and one way you can do this is with feature detection, which is a process of testing whether the browser is capable of that particular function and providing a fallback if it's not supported. For example, if we wanted to check whether our browser supported the fetch API, we can set a variable which will default to true and then change that value to false if when trying to access the fetch API, we get an error. Of course, in my modern version of Chrome, fetch is supported and the value of is fetch supported is never changed. But if the fetch API wasn't available and we can imitate this by misspelling fetch in our try block, you can see the result of is fetch supported is now false. And as a bonus, we don't get any errors in our console. So we could then write some code that looks a little bit like this. So if the value of is fetch supported is true, we'll go ahead and use that API. But if not, we can use a fallback process to send our network requests, such as creating our own XHR object or even using a third party library. So feature detection is probably the best way to work out whether a browser can or can't do a particular action. If you wanted to work out what operating system the user was using, you could actually access the platform property on the navigator object. Which might be handy if you need to navigate the user to an operating system specific page, such as download or installation instructions, and you should be reasonably safe to use that to determine the operating system that the user is on. You might however want to work out if the user is on a mobile device, or at least has a touchscreen interface, to customise the content for that user. And one approach to doing this, rather than using feature detection or user agent sniffing, is to access the max touch points property, which is again on the navigator object. And as my laptop isn't touchscreen, I get a value of zero back. But on a mobile device, we'd see a number greater than zero, which would indicate that the user has a touchscreen interface. So there you have a few options to detect the user's browser in JavaScript. Try and avoid user agent sniffing as it's not reliable 
and utilize the additional properties on the Navigator object to build up a view of the environment that the user is working in, and finally use feature detection if you need to support a specific feature that may be only available in some browsers.